I'm Jeff Grunfeld, Jeff chairperson Garrett. of the speaker's program. I have a confession to make. I was a 97-pound spiritual weakling. I turned to religion, and there was no answer there. And I turned to You're Swami. You're a nymphomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> I found truth. I found meaning. I found, found salvation. Without further ado, here's our Swami. Well, my, all my shirts were in the laundry, so I wore my bathrobe. <laughs> in an effort to continue my crusade, to pay the rent, <laughs> I am hustling some of my own personally published obscene poetry. Now, if you're not up for obscenity, as some of the young ladies on the campus aren't, I've been awarded the Male Chauvinist uh, Award of the Week at Pig Turd. <laughs> <laughs> they did it, and I'm obscene. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, sort of in uh, response to that award, let me give you one of my finer works, briefer works. If you think my poetry is obscene, it may be because you are a lesbian. <laughs> there's more, there's more. I really have no objection if you hate your father. It's not my fault that about you he didn't bother. I suggest you find a man who loves to love. Then put your ass in bed with him and start the show. <laughs> Before I get into my uh, impromptu freak out, let me give you some of my poetry. And many times, Adam had to stand in many, many lines. Then God made Adam too, for you see, God is Jewish and ACDC too. You ask about the uh, serpent. It was a candied eel. Hope I'm not impertinent. And the apple was a mango, and it still takes two to tango. There was very little shade in the Garden of Eden, and they didn't have any cabanas, but Adam had his personal banana. And Eve had her sweet banana crunch, so they made banana cream crunch pie for lunch and had enough left over for a midnight munch. You dig what I'm saying, at least you have a hunch. For those without the faintest, you're just out to lunch. Roses are red, violets are blue. Jesus was a stud. How about you? Uh, I would, but my poetry's up here, and I'm going to resort to it. I, th I thought I might be a little nervous, and I am. Uh, microphones make me nervous. I always, they look like guns. <laughs> <laughs> You're under arrest. Okay. Uh, roses are red. Violets are blue. I'm a schmuck. You are, too. Doesn't matter, uh, you may be an Arab, and I may be a Jew. Doesn't matter who you are. It's only real if you're good and true. I fucked that up. But, but <laughs> I better read this shit. Because <laughs> I'm very stoned, man. <laughs> there are any questions at any time? It's a very informal meeting. Just shout them out. <laughs> That's my manager. <laughs> uh, Ex-manager, I should say. <laughs> I'd like to utter something new and fresh and original for you. But since everything's in a state of flux and there's nothing new under the sun, fuck you. 
The only things that are true for you are the things you make real by what you do. You'll have to raise your vision to the star and make a bedspread of the red, white, and blue. He's a freak. Ain't he neat? Can't be beat. To him, life's a treat. He's a freak. He's all right. That long hair doesn't make him a creep, just an Aquarian age soul that can leap into a vision of tomorrow. His joy encompasses his sorrow. He doesn't want to beg or borrow. He just wants to build and create a glorious tomorrow. He's a freak. Give him a break. And I don't mean both legs. Those freaks are your kids, whether they're in short hair or smoking lids, or both, forsooth. They love you whether you know it or not. I suggest you untie your own ego knot. Yay. Okay, just throw money, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, don't forget, I got some of my obscene poetry, and if you don't like, you're not into obscenity, it's mystical, so you can't miss. <laughs> What's that, man? What's, motherfucker, what's that? Sanskrit, man. <laughs> Om, Amen, and Hiram, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Agni, Ushas, and Mitra, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, truth, good, and beauty, thought, will, and love, Father, Son, and Holy Smoke, Om, Tat, and Sat, Mani, Mo, and Chuck, how about that? What's in your sock and what's in your sack? Do you dig to rock and sock, got the knock and knack? Nowhere in the cosmic universe is there a lack. Everyone and everything is on the path, way, and track. My only failing is being hooked on crackers called Ack Mac. Twenty years too late for the sexual revolution, but not to worry. I believe in reincarnation, and I'm coming right back. <laughs> Heavy mystical shit. There's my ex-manager again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, incidentally, you know it's... Uh, you cannot, repeat, you cannot say motherfucker on the radio or television, but you can put them in the White House and the Senate. <laughs> Your governor, a man of very high principle, not too much intelligence. <laughs> Believes in capital punishment. And I think you should give it to him. <laughs> if you're from the CIA, only fucking around, man. This is the new wave of humor. <laughs> These kids aren't going for any more Bob Hope jokes. You gotta throw in a little revolution every once in a while. Revolution, revolution, revolution. What is revolution? It's turning on that middle class moron to the fact that he or she's alive. It's basically informing them that come is more relevant than arrive. <laughs> I'm a poet. I know it. Hope I don't blow it. Mr. Zimmerman said that. I'm a kosher swami, little theatrical and hammy, a virgin for a mammy. I said that. I was a crazy black Jew, and those bastards are now crucifying you. Jesus said that. I'm your president, and I'm not hesitant to murder Exploit or embezzlement? Nixon said that. <laughs> Billy Graham is coming. Billy Graham. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a mistake, man. <laughs> 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 no way, man, no way. Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's on somebody's track. Billy Club Graham Cracker said that. Upon returning, my first official task 
is put my foot up Billy Graham's ass. <laughs> Jesus Christ said that. <laughs> he ain't coming back. <laughs> Would you come back? <laughs> he was a street entertainer. Very tough audiences in those days. One bad, one bad trip, and look what they did to him. <laughs> Keep America clean. <laughs> Buck up Vietnam. I don't want to shock you good you dare Christian people, but I've got a message for the boys and girls. If you stay with mommy and daddy too long, you may the rest of your life sing a very sad song. Grow up as soon as you can. Become a full-grown woman or a fucking man. Since before Adam and Eve, sex has been a part of God's divine plan. If you don't know, a turned-on little girl will show you where to put your hand. You should all get a piece, and you should also get a piece of land. That's how heavy I am. I've integrated land reform with the sexual revolution. <laughs> I lie to you, Jesus Christ is coming back next Thursday, <laughs> and he's going to Indian wrestle Billy Club Graham Crackers for the souls of Tricky Dick, Dirty Bird, Weasel Face Nixon, <laughs> and Spicket Head Ague on the White House lawn amidst 17,000 screaming, climaxing religious fanatics and freaks. <laughs> the Pope will be there, passing out free abortion literature. <laughs> Amy Semple McPherson, for you old-timers, will be playing the organ. Anybody's. <laughs> the man with the lucky number. She's going to do it from the astral plane. Ed Sullivan will perform a highly unusual and rarely seen unnatural sexual act <laughs> with Pearl Bailey <laughs> while her husband, Louis Belson, plays Rachmaninoff's fifth piano concerto on the drums and divorces her without missing a beat. Frank Sinatra, the Pope's nephew, <laughs> will sing night and day through a plate of stale spaghetti made and blessed by the Pope. My old buddies from the State Institution for the Criminally Insane in Illinois <laughs> <laughs> will be there as ushers. And as a climax to this concert, 14 old, insane, senile American senators will be thrown to, turned on, very hot, orgasmic, hippie love goddesses floating in 40 gallons of lsd pink champagne. <laughs> I'm selling tickets to that this afternoon. <laughs> I want to be a poet. Love and life, they know it. Many times I've been blind, bloated. I'm just a sassy schmuck, I know it. I've reaped because I've sowed it. Whatever I've got, I've hoed it. My ship's now coming in, they've towed it. <laughs> It's only a rowboat. I should have rowed it. <laughs> I used to be a male chauvinist. I used to be a real son of a bitch. Recently, I've taken a vow of celibacy. Now I'm on the road to idiocy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man, you don't fuck, you go crazy. Yeah. Wind up, you know, running around, Harvey Krishman, Harvey Krishman. <laughs>
How do we know Jesus was Jewish? Who else is going to feed the multitudes on just two bagels, six loxes, and 17 joints? <laughs> how, do, how do we know that Jesus was such a heavy stud? How do we know that? <laughs> what do you think all those sticks were doing up there on that hill? Are you kidding me? It's a Friday night. <laughs> they could have been out getting stoned at a concert, getting laid, relayed, overlaid, parlayed. <laughs> they were all up in that hill. He was bowling them all. Uh, Magdalena, Mary and Martha, Rosemary Manischewitz. I don't want to say anything about the family, but his mother was up there, too. <laughs> you never can relate to that, can you, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> How do we know Jesus was black? Because he loved the fuck, and they killed him, didn't they? <laughs> that never goes over, either. <laughs> right on with your revolution. Yeah. Life and death. Here today, gone tomorrow. Light and shadow, joy and sorrow. It makes little difference which side, whether you're inside or out of your hide. We're all here for the ride. You're not going to dig it till you're rid of your pride. Take no thought of yesterday or the morrow. Screw your mummy and daddy. Tuesday, well then, Raymond Navarro. <laughs> From the Hindus, a little wisdom borrow. Tot Tomashi, thou art that beyond all sorrow. Don't, uh, thank you for the clap, but just throw money. <laughs> Before I return to my heavenly home, I would love to pen the epic poem about the seashore, ocean, farm, and great unknown. But as a sassy, astrological Swami Sanyasin, I suppose I'll continue just to roam into the unknown of tomorrows until I feel at home. Then I'll settle down and write that epic poem. In the meantime, I'll just write these half-assed rhymes, which I like to think are great signs of the times, but only seem so because they happen to be mine. <laughs> was, uh, was that a comment? <laughs> okay, this is very apropos. <laughs> We're living in America, so never judge a book by its cover or a man by his clothes. That may be a narc, charlatan, or first-class schmuck beneath those yellow robes. Keep, yeah, keep your mind. <laughs> Second class sex maniac up here. Keep your mind slightly closed and your money in your hose to your really nose. I'm sure you've all heard about the 14 year old perfect master who was busted for smuggling in New Delhi some months ago. He was a perfect master, but he was a rotten smuggler. <laughs> And this could be an apocryphal story, but I've, it's been related to me by a very unreliable source, my ex-manager, who says, I'll get you in trouble, Louis, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, he says that uh, Swami Satyajananda was discovered going down on one of his disciples. He is now Swami Sakananda. Oh, all the perfect masters, man. Any man or woman who claims to be perfect, it's got to be nuts. I have, personally, I happen to be a great spiritual light, but I can't find the goddamn switch. <laughs> if the light in thee be darkness, turn on a light, you stupid son of a bitch. No, nothing. Okay. <laughs> I want you to know, seriously, to fulfill my spiritual obligations as a swami, let me give you bring a, a small segment of pure spiritual truth to your minds and hearts and consciousness. God lives within you all. God loves you all. That's how crazy that motherfucker is. <laughs> and if you don't think God's got a sense of humor, take a look around, take a look around. <laughs> Look, under every success story, 
and you'll find sex with its lovely head. I'll tell you where's the real field of glory and gory. No, it's not in a bomb crater with a gutted, butchered soldier boy. It's in bed with a senator's wife enjoying a two-star general's military toy. They, there's an ugly rumor going around that uh, there is no sex after death. Christian junkies are propagating that propaganda. There's no sex after death, I ain't leaving. <laughs> Is there sex before breakfast? <coughs> yes, but I need a little yogurt to get started. <laughs> Let me tell you about male chauvinism, since I've been accused of that. And male definitions. Voltaire said, let's define our uh, words before we rap, man, or we can't get down into it. A male chauvinist is someone who leaves the toilet seat up. <laughs> so this is a test. Test yourself, you schmucks. <laughs> a male chauvinist comes first once and only once. A male chauvinist does not believe in before play, after play or replay. <laughs> a male chauvinist is the gal gallant and galoot who will hold the door open for you and then try to close you out of the conversation. A male chauvinist believes that you have no mind and that your body is made of braille. Here, yeah, Mildred, I'll get it in a minute. Take <laughs> <laughs> your time, Spock. Yeah. Equal time. A woman lady chauvinist is someone who entertains the illusion that her box contains the center of the universe. <laughs> and if it's the right woman, it is the center of the universe. <laughs> Luther Burbank talked to flowers. Timothy Leary talked to trees. I myself talked to marijuana plants. I said, come on, babies, get it on. Grow tall in the sky. And when you fall, we'll get together and we'll all get high. Marijuana is a sacrament out of God's earth, put here by God. Tobacco, this is a sherbiti. Let's get high on this first thing in the morning. Tobacco will give you lung cancer and democracy. <laughs> Marijuana will give you a fantastic appetite for food and women. And if you're very creative, you can combine those two activities. <laughs> the health food people say you are what you eat. This makes me a nymphomaniac. <laughs> I've got another, re another rebuttal for the... Uh, for the uh, women's liberationists, ha ha, <laughs> who condemned me as a male chauvinist. This is entitled, The Midterm Jesus Junkie Freak Out Blues. <laughs> oh, Dars, my dear, let's get a beer and truck. Move our bots with the music, and for an hour we'll be free. No, Chuck, I can't truck. It's midterms. <laughs> Oh, Doris, my dear, let's smoke a J and lay. Move our bonds to the cosmic music, and we'll be free. No, Chuck, I can't fuck. It's midterms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doris, my dear, you can ignore me now. I've become a Jesus junkie, and I'll soon forget how. 
and what it is to be free. Oh, Chuck, let's buck. Midterms are ended now. <laughs> Doris, have you been saved? Chuck, I just want to be laid. <laughs> Doris, you'll go to hell. Chuck, you're in hell right now. <laughs> Doris, you put me here. Chuck, come with me. Paradise is just that near. All free women who would stay free be very cautious of little boys who won't let you be. They want a Yiddish or mummy or a punching bag, a domestic dummy or a housekeeping hag. Ball them if you have a need, but on your mind and soul, don't let them feed. They're looking for someone to take the lead. No, each must account for his or her own deed. Takes a lot of courage and vision to stay truly free. A lot of people who claim they're high are just up a tree. Speed, alcohol, tobacco, paying taxes and working for someone else are all ego trips. You asked me how I figured that one out. Well, I'm very perceptive, and I've also smoked a lot of lids. <laughs> the only honorable professions left in this country are welfare, collecting, boosting, dealing, begging, hooking, and turning on the kids. They claim statistically that 90 million dollars are spent on deodorants in this country every year. And it still stinks. It's all right, you should genocide those little bastards, those little communist bastards over there trying to overthrow my country. And I haven't made my million yet. I'm going to buy Madagascar and get the hell out of here. <laughs> They're plotting with their grandmothers. They're only six weeks old in the crib, plotting with their grandmother. Smoking that deadly uh, weed, marriage weenie. <laughs> Grandma, when I grow up, I'm going to destroy capitalism. Right on, kid. Don't be bogarting that joint. <laughs> so I got to go down to the drugstore and uh, get raped by 18 American GIs. I'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs> if you've never had the clap, known locally as the Venice flu, <laughs> last haven for individuality in the country, one of the few last ones. Or been in prison, you're not a human being. If you're a robot, you obey all those insane laws. If you need to have in-laws before you can fuck, lots of luck, schmuck. <laughs> if you're paying taxes, you're not only immoral, you suck. If you're out there, Mr. CIA man, I'm only clowning around. I'm just a Stone Street freak a super swami schmuck trying to make a fast guinea or slow-moving Jewish girl. <laughs> and I promise when I make the Lawrence Welk show, I'll revert to archaic jokes by Milton Berle. War. This program is brought to you by the U.S. government. <laughs> War. It's a rotten substitute for sex. Sex is nature's way of saying hi. Hi is what you get when you live by truth and in love. Love is God. God is love. And love is not only above, it's also in bed. Bed is better than red or dead. Dead is what you may get if you go to war. War is a rotten substitute for sex. Sex is nature's way of saying hi. Hi is what Nixon never was. There's an ugly rumor going around town that Pat Nixon is a necrophile. <laughs> Just because she's sleeping with a dead man. I, I want you to know that I am a descendant of a very long line 
my mother once listened to. <laughs> my grandmother was Jewish, and one quarter kosher. But my grandmother is so unorthodox, she's fighting with the Arab guerrillas, getting laid 30 and 40 times a night. She hopes the war goes on forever. <laughs> then my other grandmother, American Indian princess, as the only American Indian princess at the first rock concert put on by this country, called the Battle of Little Bighorn, <laughs> sponsored by the U.S. government, uh, 75,000 very fed-up Indians attended, along with and emceed by, <laughs> emceed by George Armstrong Custer. And as the only Indian American princess, it, it was her unique distinction and dubious pleasure to eat the testicles of the vanquished enemy. Now, with the luck of my family, George Armstrong Custer didn't have any balls. <laughs> the great-great-grandfather of John Wayne, who also hasn't got any balls. To show you how heavy John Wayne was, he said shit three times in the Playboy interview recently. <laughs> in fact, the whole interview was full of shit. <laughs> Poetry first, then prose. The nose, and the intuition knows. Are we really here, do you suppose? Can we choose, would you propose? Is there a God, oh wow? Am I living, is it now? Am I living, how? I'm alive, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. Now, oh wow, how? Love, shove, from below and above. Light, right, within, third eyesight. Life, night, day, light, forever, evermore. Leela, the cosmic whore. Thou art the seed, the cosmic core. Thou who hearest this are both on this side and the other, and thou art also the door. We set up, there's a microphone over there for questions, but you, this is, you know, I can hear you. If you have a question, keep your mouth shut. I work alone. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you have a question and it's whatever the question, I'll deal with it wherever it's coming from. Louis, do you have any? Where have I been? I've been down in Venice uh, collecting material for my book called I Lived Among the Hippies. <laughs> um, I have to finish the chapter on clap. I have to catch it seven more times. <laughs> any, any, uh, any volunteers out there? <laughs> okay. That's it. I ran, out, I ran out of all my material that I had programmed. I had a program for this uh, session here this morning. Give me an F. F. Give me a U. U. Give me a C. C. Give me a K. A. Give me a y. y. Give me an O. Y. Give me a U. <laughs> What's that spell? Y. What's that spell? <laughs> What's that spell? Y. Thank you for the blessing. <laughs> Uh, what do I commend for impotence? Recommend. Uh, a, a nymphomaniac. What's that? What was? An encore. An encore. Encore of what? I'm freaking out, man. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I love. I destroyed my mind many years ago. I am now working on my nervous system. <laughs> I'm up to the third chakra, and when it gets down to one chakra and God, I'm going to tell the motherfucker to get out of the universe. <laughs> Little philosophy there, I suppose. Yeah, God, uh, every morning I wake up in the morning and God's tapping me, uh, tapping me on the pineal gland. Just get out there and freak out. You're my personal representative. If Billy Graham represents Jesus Christ, I represent Attila the Hun. Are you putting me on? <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ Milkman is, uh, but this is why all his kids are named Jesus, even the girls. It's Chicano Milkman. His name is Speedy Jesus Gonzalez. Billy Graham goes out of the house in the morning and says, Goodbye, bitch. I'm going out to save the world. She's Jewish. She says, Get the fuck out of here, schmuck. <laughs> Chicano milkman in the back door says, Hey, baby, you want your sex before or after breakfast? She says, Everything with the cornflakes. <laughs> Eight hours later, Billy Club Graham Crackers comes home, says, uh, opens the door, says, Well, bitch, uh, I did not save the entire world, but we made 50 grand. Here, put it in the safe. 
in an effort to placate and uh, supplicate and uh, soften up her, uh, her master, this domestic slave or wife, says, oh, Billy, Billy, I had another vision of Jesus today. In an effort to minimize her achievements, this male chauvinist motherfucker says, very good, very good. She says, very good, very good, you son of a bitch. It was fantastic, and he's coming back tomorrow with some yogurt. Uh, do I know him? That's one of my friends feeding me lines. <laughs> right? You're feeding me material. I, I hung out with Maharishi many years ago in the old days in Hoboken. We called him Hot Tires Colucci. <laughs> Come in to me one day and said, man, 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 man. Gonna make a million motherfucking dollars. I said, schmuck, you can't even kick speed. How are you gonna make a million dollars? Come with me. I didn't have the prescience to follow Hot Tires Colucci, presently known as Maharishi, or today I would be rolling in hot and cold running nymphomaniacs. <laughs> he went to India, read a couple half-assed books on yoga, learned a couple dirty Sanskrit ditties, and then advertised, true story, advertised, they tell me, in the New Delhi Times for disciples. Can you, wow, can you imagine Jesus Christ advertising for disciples in the New Jerusalem Times? Wanted 12 whiny half-ass schmucks to follow me around the countryside. <laughs> Attend all the free concerts. Turn on the straights. And as a reward for your activities, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. And that's difficult because I don't know where the fuck I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> all the hash and women you can eat. And as a reward for your activities, you will be crucified upside down. <laughs> now who's gonna answer an ad like that? Me and a few niggers and freaks and friggers in uh, Venice. You know what a frigger is? That's a nigger who d d likes to live dangerously. He's become a freak. He doesn't know why he's being beaten to death. Are you killing me because I'm a freak or a nigger? Man? <laughs> We'll figure it out when we get the body into the station house. I'm a very tough cop, a very tough cat. I walk up to cops in Berkeley two years ago, heavy, I'm not just a nut in a bathrobe. <laughs> a heavy, revel walk up to, I say, in Berkeley, I say, motherfuckers, I'm not afraid of you and your goddamn guns. They're very clever in Berkeley. They say, yes, but we have bullets. <laughs> Peace, peace. <laughs> I believe in peace, uh, spell it any way you want. Mother's my favorite word, but that's only half of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm still doing five years on Earth. I got caught on the streets of Neptune, uh, unstoned. We have drugs so heavy on Uranus, they'll make a Republican fuck. When I haven't been loved and laid for three days, I become a little strange, a little weird. Four days, antisocial. Five days, obnoxious. One week, vicious. Two weeks, I register Republican. Th th six months, Democrat. One year, I join the Playboy Club. Two years, I start reading the Bible and going to bed with gloves on. <laughs> Three years, I joined the Minutemen. Do you know why they call them Minutemen? <laughs> Their girlfriends carry stopwatches. <laughs> I don't have to do this for a living, for Buddha's sake. I could be living in the lap of luxury in any mental institution in America tonight. <laughs> Eating jello, pinching the nurses on the ass, and being beaten to death by the ward boys. Ex Jesus junkies, and the Rangu Rangu Gaga Goo Goo people. These are the people that say if you make the Rangu Rangu Gaga Goo Goo chant for uh, six months, you'll get uh, enlightenment or a Cadillac car. 
I've got all the enlightenment I can handle. I don't need a Cadillac. I've got two good feet and my thumb. And when I hitchhike in the area, there are accidents. <laughs> yeah, the freaks try to get away from me. <laughs> so, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> yes, my son. Uh, are they really gone? <laughs> yeah, but you got Nixon. He'll continue to genocide you. <laughs> yes, my son. <laughs> well, if you've seen any speeches where he can fold his hands, I guess he's into it. Okay. You're president and can't fold his hands. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I haven't been sexually climaxed in all my years. Now, you may think that a perfect farce, but it's true. I never really had a piece of arse. Of course, I bowled with J. Edgar Hunky in his own private alley, shot golf with Spigot Head Aggie and two other guys named Peggy and Sally, but I never had a piece of pussy. That's because my mummy was so puritanical and pussy. She told me if I never played with myself, I'd grow up to be happy, successful, and president. I never did, and now I'm the most noble homo of them all, the White House resident. <laughs> you may be wondering about Trishy. Well, there's something kind of fishy. I never really stooped her mother. I know, I know that sounds weird and lyrical. Could it be some kind of miracle? Or should I investigate the milkman and become satirical? Let me make one thing perfectly clear. I'm going to genocide the whole sexually intercoursing world. My plan is very near. I'm conspiring with the Pope. He's going to make all his pizza pies with Spanish fly. <laughs> then you'll all sexually intercourse yourself to death and die. Then I'll be able to last to play with myself and let out a great gasp and sigh. Oh, what a rotten bitch my mother was to tell me that awful lie. And as I said before, let me repeat, because it, bear, it bears repeating, since I want to live to a, be a happy old sex maniac age of 80, uh, if you're from the CIA or FBI or any of those other heavy secret organizations protecting our country against us, <laughs> I want you to know I'm only kidding, man, just fucking around, just, just trying to make a buck. Yes, my son. In, in, in conformity with that question, there's, there's, a, there's a story that Coca-Cola will give you malformed offspring. The only thing I can think of is that Richard Nixon's mommy and daddy drank a lot of Coca-Cola just to come over my pad with my parents and <laughs> drink Coca-Cola. Okay. I was busted in Berkeley uh, two years ago for very heavy rev revolutionary activities, hitchhiking. I was fined $42.50, $35, $7.50 travel tax. I said to the douchebag at the time, I said, douchebag. If I had, if I had $42.50, I would have taken a motherfucking taxi. Yeah, when I was lecturing in uh, Hyde Park uh, a couple years ago, I used to say, uh, open my uh, talks by saying, multitudes, and they would say, fuck you. <laughs> I said, you don't even have cops over here. You call these good-looking kids with the necks and tall hats and no guns cops. I used to go up to them and say, pardon me, officer, could you please tell me the direction to Times Square? They were very witty, intelligent. They'd say, cross the ocean and take a left. I told the multitudes in the Hyde Park, I said, you don't even have cops. Come to America, I'll show you a real cop. No neck or brain. <laughs> because these, uh, whatever, uh, have no neck or brain, it's sometimes a little difficult for them to judge distances. And they carry two guns and two clubs. A big gun for the fresh niggers telling their people the truth about the situation, and a small gun for just the ordinary nigger walking around minding his own business. <laughs> then they have Two clubs, big club for the big freak, small club for the small freak. Now, because they have no neck or brain, it's difficult for them to judge distances so. But, hey, Herbie, is that a big freak or a small freak over there? So, I don't know, Charlie, I got no fucking neck or brain either. 
So, so he says, well, we better hit him with the big club because those bastards carry that deadly LST stuff. And they, they stuff it up your nostril, you go insane and rape your uncle. <laughs> so they worked the kid over for 20 minutes with the big club, a heavy revolutionary from uh, Santa Monica, 17-year-old kid, uh, jaywalking. <laughs> he, uh, he resisted arrest, he said. Uh, what are you busting me for? Man? <laughs> so they take the corpse into the station house and report to the captain. And how do we know the captain is the captain because he's got a quarter inch of neck. <laughs> what's, go what's going on here? What's going on here? So well, I had to kill another frigger. So okay, says so take the body into the uh, morgue in the back and take the weekend off. You've had a traumatic experience and rest up, polish up your gun club and bullets, and uh, I'm in Monday, we're having a demonstration, you can kill a lot of niggers and freaks and friggers. <laughs> Those heavy niggers who are freaks. Okay. Any questions? Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, let me just say, fuck you. <laughs> yes, my son. Groundhog Day, I'm gonna go down. <laughs> Yes, my son. Well, I think of the blue hood. It all depends under who's under the hood. If I'm under the hood, it's groovy. <laughs> That's a lady over there. Let me have the lady's question. Well, if those the Irish were fucking, instead of fighting, they'd be better off. If you were all fucking, you'd be all be, you'd all be better off. I've discovered one very important scientific fact that uh, saved my life. The more you fuck, the more you want to fuck. <laughs> and people object to the word fuck. They say sexual intercourse. If you talk to chicks in Venice, how would you like to sexual intercourse? She's halfway down the block. <laughs> so how do you want, would you like to fuck? You get right there, focus. <laughs> Question. So have like a right. Have I signed the sideboard position? Free disciples? <laughs> Who the fuck are the disciples? <laughs> I'm sorry? The, the side that's working for the kids. Well, save the world for the kids. Definitely, I'm a poem about that. Uh, sure. Well, see, if I am elected, I will, re I, I will reduce the vote to 14. Of course, I've met some goofy 14-year-old nymphomaniacs. Al Cap couldn't even wait till that chick was a decent age. Eight years old. <laughs> Heavy. Man, it's really immoral. <laughs> the entire country. It's one of my disciples out there. <laughs> yes, my son. Uh, am, am I going to be president in 76? Oh, Agni, if he is, I'm leaving the world. <laughs> I'm going back to Venus or Neptune. Yeah, see, I, I don't want to bum wrap your planet, but you've got a rotten planet. That's where it's at. Your women aren't even made right. Come to Neptune, I'll show you a perfect woman. Her head only moves like this. <laughs> am I a neat swami? Oh, am I in heat? Uh, a, a, he, a geek. No, I'll settle for heat. Someone said geek. The geek swami. Well, that's why not, man. Geek. I'll eat chickens if they're young enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> am I in heat? Well, I'll be excited after this performance. I'll have a little energy, yeah. If there are any young ladies who have been denied by all these male sh chauvinists on the campus. <laughs> Incidentally, my poetry, if you take my poetry home and read it to your impotent boyfriend, you will get laid tonight like you have never been laid. If you go home and uh, read some of my poetry to your frigid girlfriend, you will be bald like you have never been laid. 
and the other way around, you will be eaten like you have never been. I'm not going to, I wrote that, I'm not going to deal with that. Yes, my we, well, you got here late. We went through that. <laughs> he, we know he's a Jew because he'd rather eat pussy than kill. You asked uh, 10 out of 10 people in America if they would rather be murdered or fucked. Nine will say fucked. The 10th will be a Republican. When they, when they have Amelia Earhart on. <laughs> As when, well, the question was, when are you going in the dating game? Yes. 69. <laughs> or 77, you get eight more. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's my generation. I go back. <laughs> I'm 20 years too late for the sexual revolution, but I believe in reincarnation, and I'm coming right back. <laughs> the bathroom of a friend made me that after I made her. I'm a junkie, you are too. We're so unhappy, we're so blue. Our mommies and daddies didn't love us enough, so we're shooting something much stronger than snuff. We're junkies, a part of the cool, sophisticated American route. We spend our days dealing, pushing, hustling, boosting, and just nodding out. We're hip and tough and blasé. We know what it's all about. The charred flesh in Vietnam doesn't mean a damn or a Billy Graham. Compared to our next fix, of course, deep down, there's some doubt. You're going to classes now. You'll get your education here, motherfucker. <laughs> You're paying them to brainwash you. Boy, that's such a trip. Yes, my son. What do I think of Jesus junkies? How do you make a Jesus junkie? Well, you are, you are attacked by a lethal weapon, a Bible, steel plated. They crush your pineal gland. Drive all the semen into your left nut or the left part of your box. They then bring a Jesus junkie conversion kit or a Bible or a lethal weapon around the position number two up into your box or balls, driving the semen back up into the crushed pineal gland. Because the pineal gland cannot contain the crushed semen, it falls down into their eyes. That is why these people always have that cloudy expression. Oh, Jesus is coming back. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Christ, I hope somebody's coming. It's been six months for me. I saw him when I was in Berkeley around Thanksgiving. He's got, he's got a pimp suit on. <laughs> and he's got his hair pompadour. He's really going all the way fag. <laughs> yeah. My best friend is me. And I don't trust me to either, too much either. Your best friend is yourself and yourself is God. God lives within you. And looking at you, I know he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> my worst enemy is myself. <laughs> Let me just make a short announcement. A short announcement. As you're, you. <laughs> As you're leaving, could you drop like your nickels, your dimes, your quarters in a hat, I think, by the door? The fellow in a blue shirt, he's taking up a collection for Swami. He needs the bread. Go ahead. I'm carrying on my crusade to uh, make the rent. No, I'm not getting paid for this. There, I'm lucky I even got the microphone. <laughs> I'm taking a microphone with me. No, I, they, I'm a non-entity. They only pay celebrities like uh, the mystical rabbi who has got up here. All the mysticism he said you could have fit it in your left ear. Do I play pocket pool? <laughs> o only when my nymphomaniac hasn't arrived for that nightly orgy. That's why I left Berkeley. I ran on nymphomaniacs. They would come up to me and say, Swami, I dig you. A fantastic freak out up, up here on the Sparrow Hall steps. Uh, I'd like to bore you. I said, Groovy, come over to my... She's I've got some errands to do. I'll um, meet you back at your pad at 8 o'clock. I go home and take a shower I didn't even need. Put some heavy aphrodisiacs on. Eat a lot of garlic. Light some exotic incense. Turn on some nice electric rock music. 
and then sit down and wait. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, one o'clock, two, three o'clock. I'd go ahead myself. <laughs> Did you ever have a sex orgy by yourself? It's a bummer. <laughs> well, masturbation can be fun if you have a lively imagination. 3.15. Swami, I'm here. I said, come back in three weeks. <laughs> that's not true. Heavy stud. Anyway, that's what my old lady says. But she, yes, my son. Do I plan to come back at all? Well, they haven't put the nails on me yet. <laughs> yeah, do, do we got uh, uh, people so heavy in Venice, they do nails. Cats walking along the board and say, hey, man, you done nails yet? Done everything else. Come back to my pad. Do nails. What the fuck are you doing to me? Just a minute, man. I'm in a bit. <laughs> so he's... he's and he's, hey, hey, this is, is painful, man. It's very painful. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, it's worse than speed. Oh, I think I'm getting into it a little bit now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is pretty groovy, man. Yeah. There's only two problems with this trip. You're hung up for a few days, <laughs> and coming down's a bitch, man. <laughs> Never shoot crap again, man. Swami, <laughs> Is somebody going to ball somebody tomorrow night? <laughs> I hope so. That's what the whole problem. You're not fucking enough. If you were fucking more, you wouldn't want to kill anybody. You walk into some cat's pad at 3 a.m. and say, hey, man, here's a carbine. We've got a foolproof uh, plan to annihilate the um, uh, lousy, rotten motherfuckers in the White House and the Senate. This cat's just eaten and bald as old lady. Orgasm, laying back there. <laughs> Says, hey, man. What? You're probably wondering why I uh, asked you all to, uh, at this meeting today. <laughs> I want all your motherfucking money in that hat out there. I'm going to send you all to Santa Monica. What is, what is my message? I want all your motherfucking money so I can travel around with a better class of people. Tired of hanging around with you bums. I'm on a heavy, heavy company. I want to travel around with John, painting on horses, ass Wayne, Johnny Horseshit Carson, Runny Nose Ronnie Reagan. Those heavy people with all the money killing you. I was circumcised. I was a late, uh, late circumcision. I was 21 when I was circumcised. I wanted the nurse to do it first. I was, I wanted to enjoy it. When you're a kid, you don't know what's happening. When you're 21, you know what's happening. <laughs> and you should see the visual. Heavy. <laughs> heavy, heavy trip. <laughs> it's on the Cuban underground. When am I getting the astrology chair? I'm glad you prefixed that with the astrology. They want to give me the chair, you know. Well, as soon as you burn down a few buildings and really demonstrate. Burn down the history de department. They're not doing too well with that. <laughs> Telling you a bunch of lies. Yes, my son. I, uh, offspring to what? Why don't you spring the fuck out of here? <laughs> What? Where's this this schmuck on my side? Here? Where? I don't see any child. This is a full-grown sex maniac up here. I've talked to him before. I can tell. I got into his chart. What? Are you, what are you smoking? A cigarette there, man? Is on a joint? Am I going to donate? Well, I'm going to, I would donate my brain to science, but I destroyed it many years ago. <laughs> I am a double Sagittarius with the moon in Capricorn, and yours, my dear? Scorpio! 
Take a number from one to ten. Zero, the lucky number. <laughs> you have won your free horoscopic erection. I will lay out your tarot cards. You will get, receive a nice kosher American Armenian back rub. In the morning, I personally will make you some nice kosher French toast. Sometime during the night, you and I will share a fantastic religious experience. <laughs> All for 750 in food stamps. <laughs> That's why I left the country. I didn't have enough money to ball Zsa Zsa Gabor. And uh, uh, there were only two men in America, Richard Milton, Weasel Face Nixon, and myself, who hadn't balled Zsa Zsa Gabor. And I use the term man very loosely in his case. Uh, and since I didn't like the company I was in, and I wanted the experience everyone else was having. I went to uh, England, lectured in Hyde Park, amassed a fortune of 5750 in food stamps. Now, inflation, this bitch is charging $75 in food stamps. Or if you're a visiting dignitary from another country, especially dictatorial, why, you get to fuck her for a Cadillac. I offered her a very bent bike, and... <laughs> She wouldn't go for it. You have a cigarette, man? Okay. How much longer do we, uh, are we going to continue this in Senate? Three more minutes. Oh, you're leaving before the orgy starts. <laughs> yes, my son. What do I think about He'll be here tomorrow night. You come and dig him, and if you dig him, fine. He didn't turn me on. I just started a tape of him once. He hung, hung around with Leary and took a lot of acid. And I, th I still think he's on a trip. <laughs> Yeah, well, I listened to a tape for an hour and a half, and he's, well, I learned how it was to take a shit on a stool by squatting. And that was the whole trip. That's a heavy trip. Have, you ever thought of donating your sperm to a sperm bank? have I ever thought of donating my sperm to a sperm bank? So Are there any uh, walking sperm banks out there? <laughs> you doubt if anybody would what? Take that alone. Oh, take that alone. Well, I keep pushing, man. <laughs> you never know when you find a whole woman on the UCLA campus. Could happen. Yes, my son. I'm going to put George Putnam in the ass. No, he's a fascist, that kid. They asked him about, like, you know, playing the hippie or beatnik at that, during, it was like a beatnik during those. He said, no, man, he said, I got an apartment and I believe in the uh, DAR and uh, I, haven't, I didn't get fucked until I was 32. You know, I'm, I believe in all those good American values. I don't believe in, you know, individual, individualism or anything like that. Let me leave you with a closing statement. I leave you with the words of a great man. Me, who said, fuck you. <laughs> oh, incidentally, I wasn't, I wasn't kidding about that poetry, 50 cents a shot. <laughs>